you are on a healthy diet, you are staying away from eggs, you are avoiding red meat and you exercise. Yet your cholesterol is high. Do you know why? If you haven't solved the cholesterol puzzle yet, this video will do it for you. Hi, I'm Dorothy Adamiak, former board certified naturopathic doctor, author of five books and a creator of Youthing Proportions Blueprints, so you can finally get an A in health. We have an epidemic of high cholesterol. We have an epidemic of heart disease. So it's tempting to say that high cholesterol causes heart disease. After all, arterial plaque is made of cholesterol, right? Yes and no, there's definitely more to it. Today I'm going to present you with a twist. Stay with me and you'll get your health back sooner than you think. First things first. High cholesterol does not happen out of thin air and definitely not because you like eggs. The fact is, cholesterol levels in the blood are not determined by a diet. They are determined by what your body needs. Let me repeat that. Blood cholesterol is not determined by what you eat. Otherwise, vegans would boast zero cholesterol. They don't, even though there is zero cholesterol in plant matter. You know what that means? It means that one might eat two dozen of eggs for breakfast and a pound of butter for dinner and his cholesterol will stay flat like an interstate highway. Wait a second, why is it then that your doctor tells you not to eat eggs or butter if you want to have a healthy heart? Is he not educated or what? If that's confusing, listen up, you want to get this. When the body needs more cholesterol, it will borrow cholesterol from the diet. It won't do it if it already has all the cholesterol it needs. The need for extra cholesterol is the distinguishing factor. That's why there are people who can eat two cartons of eggs a day without fear of cholesterol going up. And there are those who will see a spike just by looking at one egg a week. Now, if you belong to the later group and you know that eggs or meat raise your cholesterol, be assured that this is not a plot to stop your heart or plug your arteries. It is because your body knows and wants to benefit from more cholesterol. What? That's right. Cholesterol is not there to shorten your life. It's there to make you thrive. Cholesterol performs many essential functions, including nerve protection, brain development, hormone production, digestive assistance, and cell membrane maintenance. That's why you have it. Your vitamin D is made of cholesterol, your cortisol is made of cholesterol, and your estrogen and testosterone are made of cholesterol. Good health requires an ample supply of cholesterol. That is exactly the reason why people with low cholesterol are plagued with poor health, including suicidal depression, higher cancer mortality or life-threatening infections. Well, if cholesterol is so vital, why wouldn't the liver produce more cholesterol in the first place? Fair question. Production of cholesterol is a very demanding task. Lipoprotein particles, popularly called cholesterol, are not only made of cholesterol, but also triglycerides, phospholipids, proteins, and believe it or not, other nutrients like antioxidants. Building a lipoprotein particle is a complicated task, requiring a huge amount of energy input and a large number of resources. So the liver gets to produce what it absolutely is necessary, not what it fancies. Serious priorities first. Absorption of cholesterol from food is far easier than its production. So whenever available, the body will try to make the most of your dietary choices. So if you see cholesterol going up after eating eggs, meat or butter, know that there is a good reason for it. Good reason? Always. Good for you? Not always. To know whether cholesterol going up is good for you or bad for you, you need to pay attention to one more thing. Timing. The duration of the cholesterol spike is very telling. 
Some spikes are transient, lasting a few days or weeks, and some are long-term, persisting over many months or years. You need to know which one you have. A short-term spike is nothing to worry about. It only means your body needed a short-term cholesterol boost, maybe to produce more vitamin D, maybe to advance testosterone production, repair some nerve damage or fight infection. Everyone is different. So once the body completes its task and doesn't need extra help, it will bring cholesterol level back to normal. Don't be surprised when you see cholesterol going down despite keeping up with a high cholesterol diet. Self-normalizing cholesterol levels indicate that the body is no longer cholesterol deficient and that all cholesterol dependent functions have been fulfilled. A different story is when cholesterol spike seems to last forever. A persistent spike means that the body requires extra cholesterol on an ongoing basis. So is that good or bad? Uh, that depends. There are several reasons why the body would want to keep cholesterol high. I'll talk about them in my future videos. Please subscribe if you want to solve your cholesterol puzzle for good. Today, I'll talk about inflammation. Chronic inflammation is a very common reason behind persistently high cholesterol. But inflammation is not a disease. It's a natural and a very beneficial process. The job of inflammation is to protect the body from an injury, whether it would be from a toxin, foreign object, or a germ. When injury happens, inflammation comes to the rescue. It mobilizes body defenses. The liver is part of the defenses. It responds by producing more VLDL. VLDL is a large lipoprotein particle that transports cholesterol. This is not a fluke. Extra VLDL increases your chances for survival by carrying vital nutrients throughout the body. Protection requires a lot of energy and a lot of nutrients. VLDL is there to facilitate that process by transporting energy-rich triglycerides, proteins, and antioxidants. The extent of VLDL production depends on the body needs. When the body deals with a mini inflammation, such as blood infection or a tooth problem, VLDL spike may be too small or too short-lived for you to notice. But if inflammation is significant, you sure will see cholesterol spike on your next blood test. This is the case with many modern diseases like arthritis, diabetes, or IBD. They are all linked to lipid changes, and that's not good for you. Inflammation is supposed to be temporary. Once inflammation does its job, it disappears. For example, if you cut your finger with a knife, your appendage gets red, swollen, and painful for two days but then on the third day all is good and back to normal. So short-term inflammation is good, long-term inflammation is not. Inflammation process is intense and if prolonged can lead to damages. The inflammation battle is not meant to be fought for months or years. It's too destructive. It can scar or calcify the tissue. Liver cirrhosis is one example. Arterial plaque is another. These are the results of inflammation that does not want to subside. Chronic inflammatory diseases like periodontitis, psoriasis, or lupus are linked to higher rates of heart disease, not because they are accompanied by higher cholesterol, but because they are accompanied by significant inflammation. Inflammation is what drives cholesterol up, and it's inflammation that causes destruction. Lowering cholesterol without addressing the underlying causes of inflammation is completely misguided. Unfortunately, many health professionals take that road because it's simpler. It's easier to write a prescription for cholesterol-lowering drug than correct nutritional deficiencies, restore gut integrity, and remove toxic foods. Now you have it. One would be far better off to use high cholesterol as a marker of struggling physiology rather than a marker of a failing heart. If you grasp the link between inflammation and blood lipids, you may want to ponder the reason 
for any cholesterol increase, even if you haven't been diagnosed with any chronic disease. Are you in pain? Do you have trouble sleeping? Are you low on vitamin D? Are you menopausal? Are you battling a virus? Do you eat junk food? There are many reasons why cholesterol would go up. For sure, it does not go up to stop your heart. So don't panic when your doctor calls. Instead, start taking an inventory of your symptoms, all symptoms. Even those seemingly unrelated like skin itch, carpal tunnel syndrome, or morning stiffness. They may turn out to be the key. And look out for more cholesterol clues in my upcoming videos. Till next time.